Okay, welcome back to our discussion uh, about uh, water and why water is so important. Uh, why does it have the unusual properties it does, and how does that relate to biology? So, so we're going to look at today is um, <clears throat> one of the other properties of water. And water's got a lot of properties, and they're all related to its ability to hydrogen bond. Um, so, what we're going to talk about today is how water is an excellent solvent. That means it dissolves a lot of things. Now, a lot of the time, you often hear people saying that water is the universal solvent um, and that's uh, not a good thing for people to be saying because if it was a universal solvent then it would dissolve everything it would dissolve the membranes of your cells and your genes and your shirts and things and uh, and you'd end up being a big blob on the floor so water is not a universal solvent it doesn't dissolve everything um, you know, it dissolves some things it dissolves things which are small and charged or small and polar and if things get too large then they can't dissolve and if they become um, to nonpolar, then they can't dissolve either. So uh, let's look at an example here with uh, sodium chloride, a compound you're familiar with, it's common table salt, dissolving in some water in a beaker. So over on the left, we've got uh, a beaker with a pile of salt in it, and as you can see over time, the salt will dissolve into the water. And we can help that along by heating and stuff. So we start off over on the left, and we've got all these water molecules. Uh, you can see, and uh, they're all hydrogen bonding with one another, breaking and forming hydrogen bonds. And we've got a sodium chloride crystal at the bottom here. Um, and so what you see is over time is that uh, the water molecules will associate with the sodium ions and with the chlorine ions. And so the water will cause the sodium and the chloride to pull apart and, and become ionized. And so the sodium is positively charged as an ion, and the chlorine is negatively charged as an anion. And so um, let's look at uh, what's going on uh, here, this green molecule, this green atom, it's an ion, surrounded by these water molecules. These water molecules are forming what's called a hydration shell, so they, they form a shell of water in three dimensions around the thing that's being dissolved, and the thing that's being dissolved is called the solute, and the solvent is the thing doing the dissolving. So here, water is the solvent, and sodium and chlorine are the solutes. So. Um, uh, the green molecule here, we'll talk about whether it's sodium or chlorine in a moment, um, is surrounded by these white molecules, these water molecules. And it's what you can see is that, that again, we've got a, um, an oxygen molecule being shown, an oxygen atom, sorry, being shown in red, and the two hydrogens being shown in white. And so the, the white hydrogen atoms here, remember, those are electro electropositive, so they've got a slight positive charge, and they're being attracted towards the, the green ball. And so if they're slightly positive, the green ball must be slightly negative. So this must be a chloride or a chlorine ion. Uh, and you can see all of the water molecules around this chlorine ion are orienting so that they're slightly electropositive, and the hydrogen atoms are pointing towards uh, uh, the ion. And if you see up here, we've got this little purple uh, ion, we've got the electronegative oxygens are all orienting and pointing towards uh, what must be the positively charged sodium. So I don't know off the top of my head whether these ions are sodium or chlorine, I know they're one or the other, um, but I can tell from looking at, at how the water molecules are arranged around uh, the, the respective ions. And so if the, the ion is positively charged, then the electronegative oxygen will point inwards and form this shell of water. And so um, the water is being organized here uh, around each of the ions. And so um, this is a more favorable state for, for the sodium, the chlorine, and the water molecules to exist in. And over time, we can see the sodium chloride crystals become completely dissolved. So, um, so what we can do is we can uh, we can represent a solvent dissolving in a sol in a, a solute dissolving in a solvent, and so um, on the left here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six A molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six B. So the A's and the B's are at equal concentrations, uh, assuming this little beaker here is completely full at the top. Um, but only one C molecule. So A and B are um, in equal concentrations, and C is at a lower concentration. And on the right here, we can see that we've got one A, one B, but a lot of C's. So the concentration of C has gone up and A and B has dropped. And so you can quite intuitively see here that um, if you add more of a particular solvent, and of a particular solute, the concentration um, of the solution goes up. And if you take 
solvent away, if you evaporated away the solvent and the water, then you would see the concentration going up also. So there's a, um, there's, a, there's a relationship between the amount of substance you dissolve, which is the solute, and the volume of the solvent and the relationship, so and the um, and the concentration of the resulting solution. So if we put one mole of solute, now a mole is just an amount of stuff. It's like having a, a bushel of corn or a dollar. A dollar is an amount, it's a hundred cents. So it's just an amount of something. So a mole is just the chemistry term for a certain number of molecules. Um, that's a big number. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And you don't need to memorize that. Don't bother memorizing stuff you don't need to. All you need to do is know that a mole is an amount of substance, it's an amount of stuff, a number of molecules. Um, and so if we put one mole of solute in one liter of solvent, so the liters of volume, so we're putting an amount of something in a volume of fluid. So that could be a mole of coffee powder in uh, a liter of water. Um, and that would give us a particular concentration. So one mole in one liter is a concentration of one molar. So um, what we see is that concentration is equal to the solute amount in moles divided by the amount of solvent in liters. And so this is pretty basic math. One molar, which is the concentration, that's a big M, is equal to one mole, that's an amount of something, in one liter. Um, and so is what you're going to need to be able to do is rearrange this equation to solve it for moles and for liters. And so that is just some basic high school algebra. I have to assume you can do that. Um, uh, if you need help with it, then uh, to come and speak to me, Leslie, uh, your tutor, uh, you take that bit in SI as well. So um, that's a little bit of an introduction to solvents and solutes. And this is going to become really, really important as we move into talking about membranes and membrane structure and function. So before we finish here, we're gonna do a quick few questions just to, to see whether that stuff makes sense. So same thing as last time, I'll show you the slide for a little bit. Um, I'll pause, you can stop the video, think about the question, and then I'll, uh, I'll shortly thereafter um, put the answer on the screen. Okay, so here we go, here's our first one. Here comes the second one. Here's the third one. And the fourth and last one. Okay, so just to finish up, um, there are some problems in Canvas that you can work through. They go from very easy to very difficult, and so um, work through those. Um, and you're probably going to struggle, I'll be honest, you're going to struggle. There's some stuff in there which is pretty hard. Um, and so if you need help, come and get help. So there's a, there's a little quiz there in Canvas, and there's another kind of more biologically applied problem. Um, you got to work with them. You got to try and see what you can do. Look on Google, chat with your friends. Um, but then, if you're kind of stuck and you can't work something out after 10 or 15 minutes, um, you know, come and get some help from somebody. Um, I've put solutions into them all, and the uh, the questions are algorithmic. So when you come back to practice, uh, you're going to get different variables. So you can do it as many times as you like. It doesn't count towards your grade. It's purely for practice. Um, so that's it for this short video. I'll speak to you soon.